morning. Welcome to those few that are sitting around our tables here at Good Samaritan National Campus. Um, but we are live streaming two days in a row now. Um, and also got a note from our location up in Waconia, Minnesota, that their residents in the Westview Acres have it a part of their regular TV um, viewing of our national campus devotion. So I'm grateful for any out there that may be viewing online, um, live and or later with the archive. And um, grateful for those that are here. Levon, thanks for the beautiful piano music to bring us in and take us out with as well. And Gail, thanks for being in the studio. Um, and notice on the um, sign there, I'm not Mary Rogers, but I will introduce her in a moment. Um, I'm Bill Grand with Mission Integration. And um, we'd like to share our prayer list and have an opening prayer. And um, then I'll introduce our guest from Sanford Hospital or Sanford Health. So on our prayer list today, we have our employees and those we serve in the locations of Denton, Texas and Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Um, the department that we're lifting up in prayer are those that work in the area of family medicine and those they serve. Prayers um, for family and friends, it's those who are involved in the military service and um, both those that are serving as well as their family members and then our private prayer requests that are in the prayer basket. Um, did want to do a, a little thanks be to God for um, those that were praying for our friend Jason. Um, got a note that his surgery was successful. Um, so second experimental surgery of that type was successful. Um, now just prayers for continued strength for his kidneys and liver that they'll keep functioning well um, after that surgery. So um, thanks for all the prayers for them and a, a thanks be to God for that. Any additional prayer requests or things to share? All right, let's be in prayer. God, for the beauty of this day, for the gift of life, for the love of family, friends, coworkers, the opportunity to come together either in person or virtually, knowing that in many ways and places we are able to be at one in spirit, be your body. We ask that you might truly bless and guide and lead and encourage and support all those in, we have named on our prayer list, those in Denton, Texas and Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, those working in the area of family medicine know what a gift and blessing that is for family members as they support each other and share those concerns with each other. We give you thanks also for those who serve in the military and for their family members, all the sacrifices they make, knowing what a gift and blessing it is for us as a nation and hopefully for us as a world as we seek to live together in peace and harmony with one another. For any other concerns that we may have in our heads and hearts or in the prayer basket, we trust them to your care. Give you thanks for the healing that is coming to Jason and to others that we may be holding in heart and mind. We ask that you might also um, be with Mary as she brings to us your word today. May you speak through her to us. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Mary is one of the chaplains at Sanford Health. Um, I've had a privilege of um, having conversations with her for the past few years or number of years at different times. And one of the joys that she shared with me this morning as a part of her journey, she has been working toward becoming a board certified chaplain, um, meaning that after you complete four units of clinical pastoral education, um, get to submit all of your paperwork and go before boards and be approved. It's sort of like getting a master's degree, sort of like in many ways. Um, but anyway, she had her committee review on Tuesday and has passed and is now officially a board certified chaplain with the Association of Professional Chaplains. So a, a thanks be to God for that as well. And Mary, we're grateful for your coming to share with us in our devotion this morning. Good morning, everyone. 
It's good to see each of you. This campus means a lot to me. I, uh, yes, I am board certified. It's been an 11-year process. And about 11 years ago, I was in seminary, and I found that I came and I worked as an intern in different ways here at Good Samaritan. And um, so you've been part of my journey, so thank you. The Lord is good to us. This morning, I uh, just want to encourage you in your faith walk. During this days of COVID-19 and the election and the current day that we're living in, the Lord is good. I'm constantly being reminded of that. As I walk the halls of Sanford Hospital, as I interact with people, there are people that are discouraged. There are people that are sad. And there are people that are hopeless. Life is ever-changing every day. I talk to staff, and they say, this is too much. And there's days when I feel that way, too. It's too much. But what I do know, that with our faith, with our anchor, with the Lord, he is good, and he does well. So as I pondered on what to share this morning, the Lord laid on my heart is, how are you hoping and coping these days? What do you put your hope in to make it through these days? What is it? Who is it? What is it? And as I opened up the scriptures, I um, keep coming back to the same passages of scripture in different parts of my life. And it's simply what Jesus commands of us. Simply. It's taken from Matthew 23, 34 through, through 40. And it says, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, and one of them, an expert of the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus, in his compassionate, gentle way, says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And as I have read that and applied it to life and talked with people of what gives them hope to get through today, this month, this year, some will say family, some say their jobs, some say whatever it takes to get through. And then I remembered a a person that I met about 20 years ago. As we had interacted, and we had met about 20 years ago, and then um, about 10 years ago, we were in a group together for grief. And this man's name is Dan. And Dan came to group, and he would be very quiet in a room of women. And the women would talk and talk and talk, and they'd ask Dan, Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, one day at a time. And Dan would come week after week, and I would, we would share our grief stories. So on one of our last nights together in a group, Dan walked in with a big box. And he placed it like a round table right there. He put it on the table. And you like us women, what do we have to do? We're curious. What's in the box? What's in the box? Come on, what's in the box? I will tell you later. So later that evening, Dan says, I'm ready to show you what I have for you. So he came and he opened up that big box and he started pulling out wooden crosses. And this cross means a lot to me. 
Because Dan said, and he laid them on the table, he had one for each person. And he said, well, I'm an, a carpenter. My brother who had died was a carpenter. And in, for the last few weeks, months, as I have grieved, I've been out in the workshop and I've been creating and making wooden crosses for each one of you. And he gave me this one and I said, thank you. The cross means a lot in my life. It's where I go for hope and for coping. And as I have this hanging in my apartment over my desk, many days I look up at it and I go, Lord, thank you for the cross. And as I think about the cross and this commandment, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. That's, that's who we really are, isn't it? So we come before the Lord as we are. We're anchored in him. So the first part of the cross here, we're to be grounded in God, in our relationship with God. He loves us. He cares about us. That's what helps me to feel anchored in life, is my relationship with God. And there are days I get upset, and I'm fussy about with God. And, and he says, it's OK. I'm with you. And then I say, Lord, how do I apply this verse to my life? Be anchored in me. And think of the cross. With outstretched arms, our Lord Jesus hung on the cross of Calvary to demonstrate his love for us. And as we stand before other people to be their support person, to love them for who they are in the struggles of life, God teaches us with the symbolic of the cross. As we're grounded in the Lord, Jesus stretched out his arms and he wants us to love and to care for self. That's the S over here. And then to love our neighbors as ourselves. To keep that in balance. Now sometimes it's like this, isn't it? Like a teeter-totter. Sometimes you give more to someone else and you're kind of lacking. But the Lord says, come back to balance. Come centered in me. Know that I love you. And I realized if you think of the G O D S O N, what does that say? God's Son is the demonstration of His love, His care, and compassion for us this morning. So I pray today that you will find your hope in the Lord and in the cross as you cope with these days. Let's pray. Oh God, we know this. Your greatest commandment says to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love ourselves, love our neighbors as ourselves. These words dwell in our hearts and rest on our lips, and yet we are slow to act on them. When we encounter our neighbors in help, we are so quickly to pass judgment, even though love demands empathy. We see your children suffering, and we are too busy, too weary to respond, even though love demands compassion. We see unjust systems that strips others of dignity, but believe that we are powerless in the effort to change even though love demands an action. And whenever we do not treat our neighbors as ourselves would hope to be treated, we do not love them fully. Lord, please forgive us. Transform our hearts today. Renew our minds. Restore our souls. And most of all, Lord, thank you for being a faithful God and showing us the simple truths 
of loving, hoping, and coping in you today. God's grace and mercy be with each of you as you carry the cross of Calvary to each one here today as you work and you share God's love and grace today. Go in the grace and peace of God. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>